In fact, the Bible says our kingdom is not of this world. Have you got that? Our kingdom is not of this world. And Jesus spends a lot of time talking about the rewards that we get. When he spoke of the, the, the talents, when he gave the talents to, to the, 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 the landowner, gave the talents to his servants. And God said, uh, through Jesus, I will make you ruler over cities. So we're going to rule the world with Christ. There are rewards for faithfulness, rewards for what we do. And I want to remind you because there was a period even in our schools when they wanted to level people up and they didn't want to give awards. They didn't want to say somebody's won a race and they get a prize because what about the losers? No, God is quite clear that there is a reward for us in the kingdom for our faithfulness. So I want to remind you of this, that I see in Exodus 3, the picture of us today, that just as God came down and used Moses to deliver Israel, thousands of years later, God sent Jesus to deliver us, not just Israel. And so the whole ministry of Jesus to us in the church is deliverance. Deliverance from sin, deliverance from fear, deliverance from sickness. And no, that's part of our inheritance that we can have and experience now. People ask me a lot of questions, and I've just recently been asked a, a question, because there is a section in the church which tries to say that the miracles and the healings were only for the Old Testament and the New, and they don't apply today. We are still living in the New Testament era. We're still living out the Acts of the Apostles. The only book in the Bible that isn't finished is the Acts of the Apostles. We are writing it today. I'm part of it. You should be part of it. And we can see the miracles. How, do, how am I so confirmed? It's simply because when God speaks in verse 12, he says to Moses, I will be with you, and this will be a token. Yes, it was when you came out that you'll serve God on this mountain. But it's more than that. When the, God of, when the people of Israel shall say to you, who sent you, you say, the God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And you know, it is the Lord God that's commissioned us and sent us. And we have to realize the responsibility that we have. We are called as ambassadors and missionaries to spread the news on the power of the gospel. And, you know, as we get further into it, you'll find out there's an awful lot more in this chapter because... Uh, <laughs> Moses argues and says, who am I? In chapter 4, Moses said, behold, they will not believe me or listen to me, for they'll say, the Lord has not appeared unto you. And the Lord said to him, this is chapter 4, verse 2, what's in your hand? He said, a rod. And in verse 3, cast it on the ground. He threw it on the ground. It became a serpent. Moses fled. And then the Lord said, put out your hand, take it by the tail, and it became a rod again. So, right from the beginning, God was to demonstrate his power through Moses to the people by a whole series of miracles. We all know how that ultimately it had to be the ten plagues which finally convinced Pharaoh to let the people go. But even today, we need to see the hand of God in the miraculous, and the church that lives outside the miraculous doesn't realize the power of God and the witness that this is. Because I know 
that when I preach the gospel and I call people to repent and then I say, look, the evidence of the truth of the gospel I preach will be shown when God works miracles and heals the people. God heals the people just as the miracle of Moses and that rod as a conviction to convince the people of the truth and the authority of the word of God. So what I'm really trying to say to you, be encouraged because God has not forgotten his promise. God will deliver you even before the kingdom comes. Uh, when I think I've had cancer twice, no medication. And if you know what putting a life, uh, uh, the whole life on, on the line is like, twice I opted, I refused to have any treatment. Every time God delivered me. When I was in the prison, God delivered me. Whatever I do, God will always deliver me. All those years working under communism, God delivered me. And the message I want to give you now is that that promise is yours. God is saying to you today, I have come to deliver you. Take that by faith and God will bless you. 